Good morning, PMP comrades, particular delegates, and more particular, the delegates of Western St. Andrew, East Central St. Andrew, Souther, South St. Catherine, Kingston East and Port Royal, Central St. Mary, Southeast St. Anne, North Central St. Catherine, Southeast St. Andrew, Northwest Manchester, Eastern St. Catherine, Southwest St. Andrew, South St. Andrew, Southwest Clarendon, Northwest St. Catherine. To you delegates, I'm addressing this voice note. This is Karen Cecilia Cross. Wish you all a very happy new year, a blessed and peaceful year, I hope it for you. And the children will be safe and your lives will be continue to move in the trajectory that you want it to move into. I pray for peace from the good Lord for you. And I pray that God will continue to shine his light and blessing on you and your family. I'm sending you this voice note because we have reached basically a tipping point in the PMP. And I'm specifically sending voice note to these 14 constituencies because we have 14 members of parliament. And this is where the cookie is going to crumble now. It is time for the delegates of these constituencies to start calling and pressuring their members of parliament to have Mark Golden be removed as the opposition leader for the People's National Party in King Charles III Parliament. You, the delegate, did not select Mark Golden as opposition leader. You elected him as party leader. It is the members of parliament, known as the parliamentary group, that selects the opposition leader. And when they meet, they select the opposition leader based on the argument, and not only the best among them, but whoever is the party leader. Now that has worked for us over the years. That has never failed us, except now. You see, comrades, you can't have an opposition leader who is defending his class and his race and his people. And his class and his race and his people are not you. Those people are the people up in the, etch at the top echelon of society, which is one of the reasons why Mark Golding cannot oppose anything that Andrew Holness does because he doesn't represent you, he represents them. Somebody told me that they said to him that he should call for Andrew Holness' resignation. And he said, I'm not doing that because it's, when he called for it, it's going to fall flat and nobody will back him up. The opposition leader is afraid of the prime minister. Opposition parties are called opposition parties because their primary responsibility and duty is to oppose oppose everything, barring nothing, because it is that opposition voice that gives you the gravitas to attract people out, outside in the country, not just your base, but other people. Every time the government proposes something, your job as opposition is to oppose it. Oppose it because even if it's a good idea, you're going to oppose it because you're vexed that you never um, propose the idea. And you're going to oppose it and you're going to put forward other alternatives, which probably don't make no sense, but you still do it. So your job is to oppose. Then when they come forward with the bad things, you oppose that vigorously. Being opposition is one of the best training camp for government because you have no responsibility to any service. You have no responsibility to, to, to the teachers and the junior doctors and the nurses. Your responsibility is to oppose the government and make sure your party is in the limelight and give the Jamaican people a chance to look at you and see what you can say and see what you can do. You can't do not much, but if Jamaican people see you defending them, because most of what the government proposes is not the best interest of the Jamaican people. So if the opposition gets up and says, we, we oppose it vocally, loudly, for the Jamaican people to hear. That's what opposition parties are supposed to do. There are times just for negotiations and compromise and all of that. But your primary responsibility is to oppose. Every time the government comes with some bullshit about trying to hurt black people, you oppose it vigorously and loudly. Mark Golden not opposing Andrew Olis. 
Mark Golden cannot oppose Andrew Olness. He cannot oppose Christopher Tufton. He cannot oppose Vaz them. He cannot. That's his class of people. I mean, Andrew Olness is not in his class, but that's his class of people, the upper top echelon of our society. And we have to protect them. These are his class. These are his people. So there's that. We have to protect them. That's the first thing. I'm not in business with you. I'm not business with the PMP. I just want to have that power. I just want to have that power of being opposition leader. Second reason why I'm not opposing is because you elected him to represent you. Bunting selected him to represent them. And those two things diverge. Those two things not in sync. So I'm busy with you. I'm busy with representing their class and their business interest. So Bunting can buy more bank and build more bank, buy out banks in Cayman, buy out banks in St. Lucia, build more banks, build townhouses, build um, fancy, fancy hotels, build all kinds of things that put more money in their pockets and leave you wondering why the PMP dead. But you see, delegates, the PMP is dead because you are dead. The PMP is dead because you refuse to do the job that Norman Manley outlined to be your specific job, to elect a good leader. And I'm not asking you to go remove him as party leader. That is a choice you have to go make at some time again in the future. It is now time for you as the delegate to start pressuring those MPs Natalie Nita, Dr. Guy, Philip Paulwell, Lothian Cousins, Hugh Graham, Lisa Hanna, Mikhail Phillips, Tony Hilton, Julian Robinson, Peter Phillips. Did I say Dr. Guy? It's time for you to start pressuring your member of parliament to have them meet and firstly, first, no, no such thing as firstly, first, ask Mark to step aside as leader of the opposition. And secondly, if he fails to do that, for them, eight of them to get together, or 12 of them, 13 of them, and remove him. It can't continue like this, comrades. Yeah. Someone will follow him up on the social media still trying to big him up because you don't get that little five thousand dollar, that little ten thousand dollar, while him and Bunting making millions and billions and doing business with you. But him keep you quiet with that five thousand or ten thousand or fifteen thousand. The voice of the people is the voice of God. And it has always been in the People's National Party that the power lies with you, the delegates. You have just never utilized or understood what that power entails. That power is not only to go vote for vice president and, and vote for party leader and get an envelope and put on a shirt. That power is far more, far, far, huge, bigger power than just that. Huh? If we look around in, say, Western St. Andrew, and I've been looking at the, 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 the voting pattern in Western St. Andrew, in 2020, 6,198 Jamaicans voted for Tony Hilton. 6,198 Jamaicans voted for Tony Hilton. That is maybe 10 times the amount of delegates that he has that selected him. That may be 10 or 20 times the amount of delegates that selected him to be the member of parliament. What I'm saying to you is that 6,000, almost 200 people, almost 6,200 people elected him to represent them. Them to represent them, to represent you, you voted too. Of that 6,000 plus people that elected him, he probably don't know 5,500 of them. The matter of citizens and PMP and non-P and then went out and then voted for him. You, the delegates, must now remind him 
that he has a responsibility not only to you as a delegate, but to the six, to the almost 6,200 people that voted for him. You have to start reminding him that he's not here to represent himself. He is there to represent that almost 6,200, which includes you. Fitz Jackson. 6,358 people voted for Fitz, Fitz Jackson in 2020. 6,300 plus, almost 6,400 people voted for Fitz Jackson. And I've always seen Fitz Jackson as an honorable man. But the people of that constituency, the delegates of that constituency, have to now start ask Fitz. They need to do something. They need to get together and have Mark removed as opposition leader and select a new opposition leader to represent the PMP to all Andrew Oldest accountable. They have to do it. And it is you who have to pressure them. It is you, the voters down at Central St. Mary, who have to pressure Dr. Guy. It is you, the voters down at Natalie Nita it, and their Garvey, sorry, who has to now put some pressure on her. It is you, the voters, who have to put some pressure on Lothian Cousins and you, Graham. Put some pressure on them and let them know that thousands of people elected them, not just 58 or 60 or 100 delegates. Thousands of people elected them. And what this government does affect the lives of those thousands of people who elected them. They are supposed to be in the opposition benches opposing on behalf of those thousands of people. They can't because they have Mark Woolley as leader of the opposition who refuse to oppose this government, who refuse to stand up for you and those thousands of people that voted for the People's National Party. You, the delegates, have to get together and start pressuring them. In those 14 constituencies, those 14 constituencies that PMP won, 82,000 people voted for us. 82,000 Jamaicans came out and voted for us. They voted for Peter Phillips, they voted for Philip Powell, Julian Robinson. They voted for Tony Hilton, Natalie Nita, Denise Daly. They voted for Lothian Cousins. They voted for Hugh Graham. They voted for Dr. Guy. They voted for Lisa Hanna. They came out and they voted for Mark Golden. They voted for Angela Brownberg. 82,000 Jamaicans came out and voted for those 14 people. Their responsibilities, if you put all of them together, each of them um, together, the 14 of them probably can come up with about 500, maybe 400, 500 PMP delegates at best. So you know that is not just PMP delegates voted for them. Citizens, teachers, students, farmers voted for them to represent them. And these people who voted for them not getting a representation because Mark Golden refused to act the role as an opposition leader. He refused and he's doing it in a cocky kind of way, as if nobody can hold him accountable. That's how he's doing it. Don't care what anybody thinks. He's not doing it. He's not going to go there and call for the, for the resignation of Nigel Clark or Chris Tufton. Government ministers have companies, private companies of their own, and they contract, they take government contract and give to themselves. And nobody not saying anything about it. Most of you don't even know half of what is happening. But Mark Golden and Peter Bunting is deeply in bed with these people, with the thief enough money and the raping of the country's resources. So they cannot oppose them. It is you, the delegates, the PMP people in the constituencies, in these 14 constituencies, who have to now put some pressure on these people and tell them you want a new opposition leader. It's the only way right now to save the PMP. Because Mr. Oles is not going to call a local government election. The next time Mr. Oles opens his mouth to call an election, it will be both elections one time. And we ask going to be that the PMP is going to be sent to oblivion. If we go into those elections with Mark Golden. 
that pains my heart. It does. Finally, I want to tell you that I have no personal angst against Mark Golden. My angst have always been that he does not represent me, does not represent the large PNP. My angst have always been he got elected in a fraudulent way, yes, but him is leader. And him have a responsibility now to unite the party and lead and be a good opposition leader. And it's two years. It's two years and almost three months. And he can't seem to do that yet. How much longer are you, the delegates on the ground, going to wait for him to do that? How much longer are you going to suffer under Andrew Olness and Nigel Clark and Vaz and the rest of them while people like Angela Brownberg and Mark and Bunting them? Are enrich themselves because their friends are in government and them take care of them. Who take care of who take care of you? Who take care of you? Who take care of your children? You have forgot to go look at and hustle it. We have a responsibility to start questioning your member of parliament. Start asking them, start saying to them they need to remove this man and name a new opposition leader, somebody with integrity and decency and honesty, somebody who have the respect of the Jamaican people, somebody who labor right is going to free, free it off. But they must, they must now elect a new opposition leader. Thank you for listening to me once again. God bless you. Stay safe. Keep your children safe.